been wearing your helmet? This one lad caught me by surprise, that's all. Don't they have anything better to do than pick fights and start trouble? Not really, Donny, no. Ow. Sorry. That's why we started the gymnasium. To keep the gangs off the streets. That doesn't seem to be working. Good morning. Good morning, miss. Another hard night with your wayward boys, Hugh. The wool packers and portsiders were scuffling again last night, miss. Are you still on to comment to the terrible ten? Uh, no. Not since that mishap a week ago. Mishap? A policeman was stabbed in a gang melee. And according to this, Constable Fry died of his injuries last night. Are these gangs killed a policeman and you have them in your gymnasium? Fronting each other in a boxing ring has to be an improvement. You encourage them to fight? Miss. Oh. Pugilism properly taught can be a noble art, Doctor. The inspector has telephoned Constable. He requires you on the St Kilda foreshore. A murder, apparently. Back on duty, sir. Good. Do you recognise him? Kevin Bradley. He runs the Woolpackers gang. Only me. I gave you a lift. Doc was most concerned he shouldn't be travelling on the tram with a head injury. Is that flower? Looks like you were stabbed during the brawl last night. You were there, Collins. Any theories? None of them had any knives, sir. Not as far as I could see. These gangs have got it in for each other. If this lad was top dog of the wool packers... But I didn't see Kevin Bradley there at all, sir. So, what do you think took place, Collins? There's a lot of anger in the force I'm in about Constable Fry getting stabbed. Kevin Bradley's the obvious ringleader to target. Are you suggesting police retaliation? Would it hurt to ask the special unit a few questions, sir? You're not to pursue that line of investigation. That's an order. Yes, sir. Now, go down to the gymnasium and take some statements from the lads. Yes, sir. This poor boy has seen a few fights. Perhaps we should talk with his boss. Mm. Never seen the lad before. It's more than likely he attended your boxing tent last night, Mr. Biggs. Well, so do a lot of people. Big Arthur's boxing troop puts on a bloody good show. Your fighters take on challenges. This lad had a reputation as a brawler. Well, then you should be looking at the gang, shouldn't you? Tell them, lovey. Well, it's true. Been at each other hammer and tongs since that big blue last week. And you are? This is Mrs. Big Arthur. More like the hired help than the little lady. Twice those rat bags pulled down her clothesline. Dragged all your smalls through the mud, didn't they, lovey? So you maintain the first time you saw the deceased was when your boxer, Yorgos, the Greek, found him this morning? That's right. Nothing more to say. George just won't be much help to you. It's like Big Arthur said, your dead blokes never fought in here. You want to know anything, officer? Don't ask him. Nothing like the smell of fresh laundry. Ah, huh. eucalyptus kills the germs. I was just looking for the ticket office. Oh. You're out of luck. The tent opens at five if the cops let us. Due to what happened to that poor boy, I assume. Don't waste your sympathy on him, Mrs. You knew him. I knew his kind. While those gangs have been bashing and brawling, decent folks stay away. And yet, here I am. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if it was the cops that did it. Really? Yeah. Well, one of their own gets done a week ago. It stands to reason they want revenge. Too little too late, if you ask me. There you are. Why on earth aren't you investigating the terrible tenors over this gang death? I assume you mean the police special powers unit. Well, I don't mean the police choir. That boy took a blade straight through the middle of a vital organ. Efficient, unambiguous, on the same night Constable Fry finally succumbed to his injuries. Surely the second death was tit for tat for the first. One dead police officer leads to one dead woolpacker. You're forgetting one dead port cider. The same night Constable Fry was stabbed, an Aboriginal boy was left on the steps of the Alfred Hospital. 
Beaten to death, no name, no details. How do you know he was a portsider? No aboriginals in the Woolpackers. And he was covered in the same flour the rest of the portsiders copped that night. Tit for tat. Gang warfare. In any case, accusing my fellow police officers will be the last place I go. So you need to be careful. But I don't. What's the address of this gymnasium? One. One, one. Right, right, right. One, two. One, two, duck. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Eyes up. Real boxing is an art form, Dot. It was part of the Olympics in ancient Greece. The Olympics? Yes, with rules and poetry and excitement. Long before every man wore One. a weapon. One, two. Or clothes. One. Constable Collins! Miss Fisher! Dot! What are you... The inspector sent me down to see how your statements were progressing and Dot was most curious about your gymnasium. Uh, sorry, Miss Fisher, but I don't think that you should be here. Franny Fisher, Dot and I were just admiring your technique, weren't we, Dot? And you are? Tom, Tom Derriman. And are you a port cider or a wolf? With you, wasn't it? You went and finished him off? Hey, you're well, dead, well, Derriman! Well, I, I, I didn't do it! Hey, uh, that's enough! Benefit. Freckles, you know the rules! What did you do after? Huh? You went and knifed him, you mongrel! Hey! That's enough! You want some too, copper? I'll give you a matching pair. I'll burn you! I'm guessing port cider, wool packer. Murderer. He had a go at Kevin last night. Knocked him down and promised him more. You said you're out of it. Tom! Tom! He came at me and I gave him one punch, that's all. Liar! Dust. Well, I'm a baker's apprentice. Mate, if you saw him last night, I've got to take you in. But I didn't do anything. Then you've got nothing to worry about. You lock him up and chuck away the key. Or we're coming after you, copper. Don't you dare threaten Hugh Collins. He's worth ten of you. It don't matter what a copper's worth when he's up against the Woolpackers. Does it, lads? I don't know what came over me, miss. I'm quite sure Hugh doesn't need me defending him. Nonsense. Beside, every good man is a good woman. And she must always be ready to step in front. Running battles going on for weeks, and last night another brawl on the foreshore between the wool packers and your mob, the port siders. They're not my mob. Since when? Constable Collins, was this young man running with the port siders during the brawl last week? The one where Constable Fry was stabbed? Well, you know I was. When I got out of the port siders that night, it's too much trouble. I just want to work and earn money. So why would Kevin Bradley come after you if you were out of it? I don't know. He's not right in the head. So why did he come after you? Look, I don't know. I was on the beach. He came up, he started pushing me around, so I lashed out. Just one punch, then I turned my back and I walked away. Like you taught me to. Who are you with on the beach? Names, Dermot, names. Come on, Tom. They're not in trouble. I just need to back up your story. You know, you should be looking at your own, not me. That tenor died last night. Next thing, Bradley's dead too. Can I go now? Perhaps it's got nothing to do with the gang, sir. Perhaps... Kevin Bradley was stabbed, so let's find that knife. And don't let your friendship get in the way of solving a crime, Collins. Why didn't you tell me a policeman was stabbed that night at the big brawl? It's my duty, Dottie. I don't want you to worry. I'm stronger than you think, Hugh Collins. 
I have been taken hostage by Latvians, woken by armed intruders, almost fed into a giant factory machine, and nearly every day of my life I'm trapped inside a speeding motor car with Miss Fisher. My whole job is a worry. You don't know the full story. Then tell me. The Woolpacker boys were heckling the salvos, and it all would have blown over, but then the port side has turned up. Tom was trying to stop the fight, but he got dragged into it. Constable Fry could be tough, but he didn't deserve to die. He chased one of them down an alleyway and never came back out. Fry had four little ones, Dolly. It's more kids without a dad. You know how that feels. I've just got to do my job, Dot. It's dirty fighting that kills people. I can't bear the sound of those screams, miss. But it's a great scenic railway, Dot. The screams of joy. I think before I got any joy. Why don't I go and look for clues at the crime scene while you talk with the hawkers? I'll meet you back here. <clears throat> Excuse me, sir. Uh, would you mind if I asked you a few questions? It's about last night. Mr. Ice Cream. 9 p.m. is. I'm saying you've got to make sure he keeps his bloody mouth shut. He's not stupid. He said nothing. Well, I'll tell you what. If he does, he's not welcome back here. And you can kiss your extra earnings goodbye. And if you don't have him back, I'll be the one talking to the cops about what goes on here. It's not like a lady to listen to others' conversations and I see that you are a lady. I was looking for you, of course. Yorgo, hmm. the Greek. I have something for you. Here, take this. Come tomorrow night. You will see more of me. Much more, I hope. I want to look on the top right hand corner of the green tent. Do you or any of your fighters own this? Last time I saw one of those, it was stuck in my best mate in the trenches, so no. Big Arthur has given you the nod for another month. Another month? Why do I have to keep fighting now that Bradley's dead? The Delahunty boy. He's taken over from where Bradley left off. He wants pain now, or he's going to tell him about Dan. Oh, he saw it. He knows Dan did nothing. Oh, God. Any leads? Never mind. We have a murder weapon. That's a good start. That lady looks like she could use a friendly ear. You 
said this was about my son. What about him? Dot and I are friends with Hugh Collins, the police constable who's been teaching Tom to box. Oh, Tom, yeah. The constable Collins is concerned about your son in relation to the death of Kevin Bradley. My boy, I'm never... sure the police will eventually get to the bottom of Bradley's death. But... The cops don't like our kind. They'll find whatever they want to find. But I will not see my son go to jail for something he didn't do. Tom seems like a good lad. He is. Like his father. A fine Bunwurrung man. Tom's all I have left now. The war. His lungs gave out from the gas. I married again, a white fella. And then welfare came and took my younger son. Said he'd be better off. Look, I know Tom's done his fair share of strife, but he's, he's out of that now. But is there something else? Something you're not telling me? Does Tom need money for any reason? <laughs> Everyone needs money. But please, keep out of this. This is between me and my son. And Big Arthur. Good day. you're not telling me or well, you're afraid we can help you Tom Freckles Della Hunty what about him there was a fight going on over who runs the Woolpackers between Bradley and Freckles he's taken over the gang now perhaps you should tell Hugh why he's been boxing at Big Arthur's tent who told you that your mother she implied you were doing it for the money. Big Arthur's? Mate, that's no place for an amateur. It's my business, all right? You're not my old man. Those boys may not have a father here, but they have you. What, um... What happened to your dad, Hugh? You said it was an accident. We, uh, we caught the tram into town to have my dad's boots mended at the cobblers near Flinders Street. I know the place. When we were walking past the pub, we saw these two diggers having a go at each other. This massive bloke was hammering this little fella. And so my dad stepped in just to break it up. But he, he got pummeled instead. He fell back and he cracked his head on the gutter. Then the police came running and um, they took me away without my dad. There he is, Toby. He looks lovely. Just like you. Are Bradley's clothes in here? Oh, 
Freckles Delahunty. Yeah, I assume that's not what his mother calls him. It seems he was vying to become top dog in the Woolpackers. How did you manage to get inside gossip from one of St Kilda's most notorious street gangs? Tom Derrimut told you at the gymnasium. Also, this Freckles person works in a bakery. Explains where they get all the flour. Your mystery boy, the one who was dumped at the hospital, he was covered in flour too, wasn't he? Yes, that's right. It's looking more and more the port side has avenged this boy's death by killing Kevin Bradley. Do you recognise him? Yes, but I just can't remember where from. Ow! Pin! I'll have it arrested immediately. Look at this. Pound notes. He's been robbed. It took a brave thief to rob Kevin Bradley. Or a very stupid one. Mm. Is that confirmation on the murder weapon? The coroner's certain this is the blade that killed Kevin Bradley. No one's son deserves that. Let's see what Mr. Freckles says about it. Nothing better than an afternoon by the seaside. Except for a thrilling ride on the scenic railway. Dot refuses to come with me. I don't blame her. Don't tell me you're scared too. Is that a challenge? If it makes it more enticing. Hey, missus. That's my spot. Freckles Della Hunty, Inspector Jack Robinson. I think it's time we had a chat. This weapon made the wound in your mate's chest. So? It wasn't me. No? You want to be top dog of the Woolpackers? Doesn't mean I killed him. Where were you last night? After the brawl on the beachfront? I went home to my mum. She kept my dinner warm, you ask her. I will. Excuse me for saying so, Mr Delahunty, but you don't seem very bereaved. If Kevin Bradley was your friend, don't you want to know who murdered him? I know who it was. Tom Dearmond, the mongrel. We hear that Kevin Bradley is a bit of a tricky character. What do you mean? Short-tempered, unpredictable. Just had to know how to handle him, that's all. Can I go? Yes, Mr Delahunty. You're free to go now. Our victim intimidated friends and enemies alike. If Kevin Bradley is that irrational, maybe somebody had to defend themselves against him. I think we should have Mac take a look at his body. Given up on the living, has she? See you first thing. Definite deterioration of the brain. What did you say his background was? Kevin Bradley. Gang leader, fighter, thug. And boxer, I'd say. These kind of injuries are caused by repeated blows to the head. Boxer rather than street fighter? More likely to happen in the ring. And these type of injuries to the brain do not happen overnight. So Big Arthur lied when he said he didn't know him. So shall I just put this brain back where I found it? Tom Derriment. Can you tell me about it? And in case the answer's not much, we know he's been fighting here. Yeah, a couple of times. As a challenger, but anyone can do that. Did you ever fight Kevin Bradley? Who? Um. Give over playing the fool, Arthur. He knows. Bradley boxed here a few times, but only as challenger. Same as Tom. Never against each other. I never have challengers fight against each other. It's always got to be one of them versus my troop. Spoken to your troop and have statements from them all, except what do you call him, the Black Belter? Where's he? Wish I knew, he just took off. Left me in the lurch. Local lad? No, 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 we picked him up out Heathcote Way. What's his real name? Jimmy. Didn't have a surname. Maybe you never bothered to learn it. If he turns up again, I want to know. Right here. Can you tell me how to track him down? It's like Arthur said. He's gone walkabout. Let's assume that there's something underhand going on in Big Arthur's boxing tent, apart from honest betting. What would it be? 
Flat gloves, bare knuckle fights, taking dives, long odds, ring-ins and house stacking. I imagine. I boxed during my youth in the AIF. Thank you, Mr. Butler. All of which sound like they lead us back to one thing. Betting. Kevin Bradley had money pinned to the inside of his jacket. Proceeds, perhaps? Must have had a windfall. This should see you through an evening of discreet investigation. Unfortunately, I'm already known to the boxing troupe, but um, I'm sure you two can mingle without attracting too much attention. We'll do our best. <laughs> it is not profit I'm after. It's information. Care to go along, Mr. Butler? Perhaps a flutter? Oh, thank you, miss, but no, it's all Greek to me. And I have silverware to polish. Two pounds on the Greek, you reckon? Solid as the Colosseum. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome, one and all. Here you are at the world famous Big Arthur Biggs Boxing Troop. Don't be shy, move forward, don't be scared. Are you all after a little bit of action? to partake inside, you will see the magnificent Black Belter, oh yes, we call him the Black Belter, take our challenger, help to skelter, look at the skill. So who should I put my money on, Bert? The only winners here are the Touts and Big Arthur. As we suspected. They put their Black Belter up against the toughest challenger they can find. Everyone thinks the kid will lose, so the punters bet against him. Big Arthur pays the challenger to take a dive. Interesting. Especially as Tom Derrimut doesn't look anything like the advertised Black Belter. Doc, sing out if you see anyone follow me. And Big Arthur Biggs Boxing Troop, we have got a show and a half to show you. Come in and see what we do in our big tent. Oh, it's full of dust. It's full of dust. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you something right now. When we get the Black Belter in the ring against one of you people who will be a fine challenger, I'm sure, we're all going to have some fun. We're all going to have a roar. Do you feel like having a fun fight, ladies and gentlemen? You're bleeding me dry. Oh, yes, it's a beautiful... Nothing to give. I need my money. I need my money. I'm in charge of the gang now. It's all we've got. Too bad. You know the price. That arrangement was with your dead mate, Bradley. It still stands. I'll make it up to your next fight. I promise. Yeah, you better. Or else I talk. About Dan. Not only is there illegal betting going on, the boxing matches are fixed. Challengers make more money if they take a dive. And Dot spotted something suspicious too. Dot? Well, yesterday a boy jostled me near the rotunda and then scavenged some small change after I'd interviewed the happy ice cream man. Very bad manners. And then today, whilst I was waiting for Miss Fisher, I saw him again near the boxing tents. Up to no good. And? Oh, and... Worse than that this time, I saw him lurking. <clears throat> I saw him try to empty his pockets for one of the boxes. The boxer was Tom Derriman. Correct, but he wasn't having any of it. Which is strange, considering Cora suggested that Tom needed money. Do you have a physical description? Yes, of course. I did take special note. And I asked around about your dead port cider, the boy who was dumped at the hospital. According to my colleague, it was an odd one. Someone had tried to cover up his injuries. Clearly he was battered to death. The powder on his face couldn't hide that. Well, that's not powder, that's flour. The port side has had flour bombs hurled at him by the wool packers. But it's not flour. It's washing soda, according to my colleague. Are you sure? Well, she said it seemed odd too. Said it smelled of eucalyptus. Just like Mrs. Big Arthur's laundry powder. Now I know where I've seen this face before. 
You had no right to paint over my Jimmy! The hammer down, no, I I I'll explain it. more! Oh, oh, hey. you, you need to kill me here! I need him healthy just enough take, to talk with me. No, you, you just keep her away no, from me. I've got me, a better you? idea, huh? You come with me for questioning. About what? <laughs> you want to deal with her or me? This is not over yet. Uh, Calm down, lovey. Just no right. Yeah, no right. They make a lovely couple, don't they? She is like his siren. Beautiful, but dangerous. Like you. I'm only dangerous in the wrong hands. You coming, Miss Fisher? Now, a young man died in the hospital, not because he was a port sider, but because he was one of your boxers. He was beaten half to death in the ring, wasn't he? What's she doing here? I'm a friend of Cora Derrimuth's. Look, I don't know nothing about no Abo kid dying in hospital. I don't think anybody mentioned his being Aboriginal. Now the truth. Or I'll charge you with obstructing an investigation. Oh. Jimmy got hurt in the ring. Bad. So you tried to make it look like he was mixed up with the gangs? By decorating him with your wife's washing soda. I knew they'd look after him. I didn't think he'd go ahead and die. How did Tom come to replace him? He'd fought as a challenger. He did all right. When he came back for more, I asked him about fighting regular. He jumped at the chance, said he needed the money. So who beat this boy up, Jimmy? Who was his challenger? It was Kevin Bradley, wasn't it? I thought he was ready to go with a big gun. So I took a challenge from someone who was bigger. Yes, I'm sure the crowd loves a mismatch, stirs up the betting. If blokes want to have a little bet between themselves, that's their business. This, this Bradley buggy, you know, he was, he was a lot bigger than Jimmy. Jimmy got him with a right, knocked him down, you know, he went crazy. If I'd have known he was a bloody lunatic, so Kevin I would... Bradley killed one of your fighters. He wouldn't exactly be your favourite person, would he? So we've got Bradley, who killed the original black belter, inside Biggs's tent. You have a very neat hand, Hugh. Thank you, miss. Perhaps you could give the inspector some lessons. Here we are. I thought you weren't going down the dead policeman track. I wasn't, but I was just going through Constable Fry's autopsy file and I found this. Lacerations consistent with a distinctive serrated blade and consistent with Kevin Bradley's lacerations. Same murder weapon? It has to be. And presumably the same murderer. Look at this. Do you have your magnifying glass? Is this an Australian bayonet? No, German. Most likely souvenired by an Australian soldier and brought back home. It's rough, but it looks like an animal. Is it a rat? A mouse? It has a curled tail. It's a possum. It's not very German. Cora's husband went to war. Will. William Wilfred. Did he come back? He did, but he'd been gassed, so he died of lung damage. Cora's first husband. Do you have Tom's file? Mm. <clears throat> Thomas James Derrimut. Mother Cora. Father... Wallet. Wallet? That's an unusual name. Or just a misspelling of Walter. Or perhaps it's Aboriginal. I bet you a ride on the Great Scenic Railway. That wallet means possum. Possum Derriment. Tom's spoken about him. Bring Tom in and his mother. Yes, sir. Sir, Tom Derriman's here, and Mrs. Derriman. Tom, stop! Let 
me pass! <sighs> he had a bicycle, sir, but I think I know where he's going. Take the car, then. Yes, sir. Announcing next, who'll be the one to swelter with the Black Belter? Who will brave the ring and make all the ladies sing? We are looking for a likely challenger, a young fella to don the gloves. Yeah, my mate will. We have a challenger, ladies and gentlemen. Fight begins in ten minutes. Why'd you run? Now my boss thinks you did it. It doesn't matter if I did or I didn't. You lot have made up your minds anyway. The bayonet. Was it your dad? Hey! I went into bat for you! I didn't ask you to! I've got to take you in, Tom, to the station. After the fight? No, now. No, I have to do this! Just let me have this one fight, and then I'll do whatever you want. All right. But I'm sticking close. Della Hunt is mate. He's big and vicious, but he's slow. He's a brawler. So keep on your feet, keep moving. In and out, in and out. There's a lot of flab there. You give me fight advice. That's what trainers do. Don't they? Thanks. But I think I can handle brawlers. Betting on yourself now, Tommy. It's the only way out. Go all in on one last fight, fair and square. There's no such thing as fair and square in there. That great Hulk will kill you if you give him the chance. See this money? I made it all in the ring. That's how I know I can do it. I can beat him. When this is done, I'll walk away. I promise. Man, like a dog for the rest of your life? No, my lovey. That's why I painted over the banner. To spare your feelings, you know? Not have to look at poor dead Jimmy's face every day. <laughs> look, I'm sick about what happened. Then don't risk it happening again. He'll kill him. I'm with her. The challenger is twice Tom's size and more. Out of here, missus. This is a private area. No, she sees it. We all do. The lad will get slaughtered. It can't always be about the money. Look, I'll sort it, OK? I'll sort it. I'll find a way. All right? Trust me. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Are you enjoying yourself? We will have a drink after. Lovely. <laughs> Call on me later. One punch, hit the sawdust all over, OK? I'll cover you 40 quid for you. No. I can hold my own with it. I knocked down blokes as big. No, you haven't. They took a fall because I told them to. They got paid. Come on. What are you waiting for? Just, I'll cover your money, OK? Just take a fall. I said also my own terms. A whole pack of blokes is gloved up, but Freckles has slipped him a fistful of fishing weights. The young bloke's gonna get smashed. Hey, 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 there'll be enough of that. It's fishing, it's fishing. Tony, you shouldn't watch this. We have to stop it, Hugh. Freckles doctored the glass.
one telephone call to raid you. Call it off! That's it! We're stopping this one! The kid's not well! All your bets will be refunded! You're done! You're done. All right, You're done. hold your You're done. horses, everyone! You'll get your fight and work something out, okay? All right, all right, listen! If everyone's happy, I'll finish the fight for the lad. Hugh! Doc, Hugh knows boxing. Give me some flat gloves. And tell him to ditch the lead weights. This will be good. Now, which is right? And he's a head butter. Tell me this wasn't your idea. This is Hugh's fight. You're dead, copper. Dead. Come on, Arthur. No, you can't have it. Come on, Lovey. Tom's in no danger now. I can make a mozza bitten against the copper. No! This money's mine. It's for Jimmy's headstone and you're not having it! When you recovered, Collins, perhaps you could arrest Freckles <laughs> Delahunty for extortion. It'll be my pleasure, sir. Oi, let's go. No, don't take him! Dan! Dan! Sorry! Let's go! Man. I want to confess! I've been trying to make it right! I think it's time we heard Dan's version of events. Bond of brothers. Dan always wanted to be just like Tom. When the welfare came and, and took him, he said he'll be back. He ran away from the welfare. I couldn't send him back to school, could I? I knew that they'd take him back. He started running around with the portsiders because Tom did. And that brawl, he couldn't tell the cops what happened. You can see that, can't you? What did you have over Tom Derriman? He was over his brother. fell. Then Kevin arrived. I told Kevin it was an accident. What he saw was that kid stabbing a copper in the back. And his brother would pay good money if he wanted us to forget it. And he kept asking for more. And I knew it was never going to end. Prize just winner. But you 
not the only one who wanted Kevin Bradley dead. Were you? One murder solved. And I think I can help you with another. Kevin Bradley's jacket. Mm. Was this from... Not quite. A mother needs to protect her child. But only another mother knows how far she would go. Come on, buck up, lovey. It's getting too hot here. Best we cut and run before the coppers decide to do something about the betting. It's a little too late for that. Art restoration, Mrs Big Arthur. It's not going to bring him back. No. Is that what made you so angry at your husband? <laughs> Jimmy was more than part of the troop, you know. He was my boy. We found him out the back of beyond, you know, good fighter. But he had no one. So you took him in? Well, Arthur, he only saw the boy's talent, but I was... Like his mum. That's what he said. Me, barren as the nullarbor, like somebody's mum. <laughs> he loved me. <laughs> and now he's dead. Oh, Kevin Bradley went mad, that's all. I, 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 Jimmy's death was a terrible accident. <laughs> Is that why you killed Kevin Bradley? No, 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 she, no, no, she, she's not herself. She, she, she doesn't know what she's yabbering on about, lovey. Oh, you should have heard him. Now, the price just went up. Your Tom thinks he can chuck his weight around. He bailed him, you one, all because of his half-caste little brother. So, unless you want his brother dead or sent back. This is never going to end, is it? It's up to me, isn't it? Not anymore, because if no one's around to tell the tale, Safe! You'll go back to welfare! I took the money to pay for Jimmy's grave. I was going to move the body, but the pubs were out. And do you know, that night I slept like a baby. First time since Jimmy died. I've got no regrets. And then you must take hold of the arms. Yes. And then the knee to the throat. Ooh, but do not choke. 
Yes, how perfect. You see how good this pose is for overcoming. Now, hold number 15. Now perhaps for a more relaxed pose. No, no. Never from below the waist or disqualification. You lose. I'm very gracious in defeat. I show you the art of the mind with the body. Why don't you show me here, on the bed? First you must watch, then you learn. Hold number 16. Mm. <sighs> Pardon, miss. If you're feeling up to it, the inspector is downstairs. Yes. Tell him I'll be down immediately. <sighs> miss Fisher. I believe I owe you a ride on the Great Scenic Railway. So, Wallet means? Possum. You win. How can I resist a man who pays his debts? I wouldn't bother with that. I ain't got the body and I don't want the body but you. I have my hands full of trouble if I try in the double cross you. I ain't got a trifle and I don't want a trifle, that's true. I know if you stop, run around, and I'll stop, run around, too. So if you see me talking to anyone, walking with anyone now, believe me, if you see me 